Hello everybody, I'm Tiago Tresoldi with the Uppsala University and I'm going to present Reflex Predictions through Extended Alignments, which is the CEOT submission to the SIGTIP 2022 shared task. So uh, advances in computational historical linguistics have been rather big in the last few years, mostly with methods from biology, but research is still done almost ex exclusively with lexical and cognitive characters and not with phonology as in traditional historical linguistics. And this is mostly because we still need a different way of modeling sound sequences because the analogies with biology doesn't really hold and the fact that domain knowledge really matters a lot and we can just reuse available methods. So uh, important things to remember about the differences is that transcriptions, phonological and phonetic transcriptions are idealized representations of various levels of multidimension and continuous information meaning that many phonological domains are not commensurate, they cannot be reduced to a segment, and that segments are not necessarily atomic, which means that they can, a single vector of information cannot necessarily capture all the information we need. So work is still needed for the three main tasks of computational historical linguistics, which would be word generation evaluation, rule inference, and output prediction, which is the one we were having. And another important part is that sound changes frequently act on classes of sounds defined by features and not individual segments. That's why, as I was mentioning, they are not atomic. Stress and tone, and which are the most famous non-segmental properties, operate over domains that are larger than a segment. So an alignment might not be able to capture that. And it's not infrequent to have melodic features operating over domains far larger than segments, such as vowel harmony, distance effect, and similar. And what I'm presenting here is the extended or enriched alignments, also called by some people multi-tiers. So it's very, very similar, not by chance, with the method which is here proposed by List et al., because it's based on the same previous research and ideas, which mostly come from the thesis of Matthias List, the first author there. And the solution they are presenting not only performed better than the one I'm presenting, but it's far more mature as a, as a programming library. Mine is still very much of a work in progress, and it's here adapted. But there are some differences, which is what I'm going to highlight here. So it's the handling of super segments or the potential handling is quite different. There is a stronger background on first in the analytical framework, which is not that common in phonology and auto segmental phonology, which might be a problem for my solution. And it's more designed for other tasks and other implementations. So reusing it for cognitive prediction was kind of a different solution from what it was intended. So there's no need to stress that much here because it's better explained in the other papers. We start with alignments. Here you have words for father and the alignment actually becomes just one tier, one, one vector of information, the segment, which can be extended. So here, for example, we extend with the sound class and here we can add contextual information. For example, the segment one position to the left, L1, and, one pos and the sound class one position to the right, R1. And this can become a single data frame, which can be used for prediction with normal machine learning methods. As I was mentioning, the super segmental is a bit different, at least the way as I can I could understand. So here's adapting the, their example, which mentions that a little bit the, the stress as a super segmental. One thing we can do to make it very simple to explain is how the stress could be encoded which here would be to replicate the information on the stress to all the segment where it pertains. Another information could be used, so, such as the syllable position, the position in the syllable, the position in the syllable counting to the end, and so on. Another uh, example using another normal supersegmental feature, which are tones. Tones are not treated as tokens here, but they are treated as a tier, which is replicated whenever applicable. So in this case, it's just to all the segments in the syllable. But this is actually simplifying a bit the idea because even though we can use just the token, the string for the segment or the tone perhaps, we can actually encode many different features. So for example, the tone could not, would not necessarily be the tone, but it could be three different tiers, one indicating the tone contour, one indicating the start pitch, and one indicating the end pitch. And for the segments, we could use many different descriptors, such as the common IPA descriptors, or a binary tree, which is one I've been developing, which is used 
in the library, but it's not in the submission we, I have here. And the rationale for that is quite easy to imagine. So the, the idea is that it should be easy or easier for machine learning, for different types of machine learning to pick patterns because it's part of the idea of what I was discussing in the very first slide of how domain knowledge really matters. And this is especially true in the case of less and under-resourced languages. We could see this quite clearly in this shared task by the difficulty, even for the best performing methods to work when there was a high percentage of missing data. But also because given that this is a work in progress, I, I have been able to explore different solutions here. So my tentative results, which again, they are not using the submission, but you can kind of see where they are in the code, which is public, of course. It's that we can, for example, not predict a segment or like having a softmax on the segment, but actually having an embedding. And from the embedding, we would have a search space, which would help us to find the most probable segments which could be perhaps combined given some character or language model and the same thing actually happens to the idea of using features so instead of predicting the segment we could using for example a softmax as you can see in the in the example neural network there we could predict the value of the different features like if it's voiced or not or what's the place of articulation or the manner of articulation and that is the output should be able to combine that. So for example, instead of like predict, predicting a K, it would predict the position, uh, the velar, it would predict the manner. And from there, you should be able, for example, to guess when it's easier to, or it's better to use a G, a G or a K. And part of the idea here is also, again, to consider domain knowledge. So for example, the tiers are not restricted to purely phonological information. Uh, sound changes are supposed by everybody to work on independent ways. So they don't met the part of speech doesn't matter, but we could encode the part of speech, for example, as a tier. And I would expect the, any machine learning method to just throw away that information, but we could encode other information, which could potentially give us better results. So, for example, thinking about the other submissions in uh, this shared task, we have the Julia submission, which was using the phylogenetic signal or phylogenetic proximity. This could be encoded as one tier. So besides having the segment and the voiceness and all the supra segmentals and the position in the syllable and things like that, we could also encode the phylogenetic proximity or position of that particular alignment site, which should be able to give us some signal in the neural network, for example, or any other machine learning method. So there's not much to discuss in the steps and otherwise, because they're pretty much this, the same for everybody. And as I said, they are quite similar to the ones in the list at all 2022 submission, which performs better than mine. So in the training, we align the raw data, we prepared, prepared the extended data frames with these additional multi tiers. We prepare the training data and we train and save the classifiers. And here, give, given that I was uh, aiming for a baseline for my method, I was only using random forests. I could have tried with other methods, but there were limitations also in the computation. So it was just RFs. And the prediction, as you would expect, we get what we want to predict. We align the raw data. We prepare the extended data frames. We prepare a next data frame and generate a Y prediction. And we build the output from there. The output, which is in this case, is just the segments, but which could combine different features, as I was mentioning. And this is in the results paper, but you can see that the performance was not the best, but it was always quite similar to the baseline SVM. Maybe the difference is due to using SVM instead of RF. Could be, but I guess it's also because it's more mature and all. But the results are pretty much acceptable for a starting point, I would say. And that was my presentation. Thank you very much, and I'm open to questions.